Well, <laughs> what have we here? Yes, I know I need a haircut. Oh dear, I must get it done. Now, what we've got here is part of my old camera collection. Now, I used to have about a thousand pieces, but when times get hard, no, when you retire, you need to cash in on your investments, and that's what these are, they're investments. So, we could have a look at them, but I think first we've got to talk about, if you're thinking about making a, a camera collection, or starting a camera collection, let's have a quick look at how it could end up. Now imagine you're down at the boot sale, and you see this, so this really old, okay, it's gold looking, but let's face it, if someone's asking 50 quid for it, would you, would you do it? Well, you'd be wrong not to. It's uh, worth in the millions. So uh, you'd be a multi-millionaire. Now what about this, this old black thing? Ah, who wants that? Well, somebody did. They paid two million pounds for it. Now with the Leica camera, there are replicas and there are copies. The replicas are exactly what they say. They're reproductions of the original camera. They're not trying to be anything else. Some of them don't even work. The fakes, as I call them, they are trying to pass them off as the real thing. And some of them are incredibly good. So do a lot of research. Finding one in a market is sometimes very difficult to tell the difference between a real and a fake. This one's a fake. But how do we know? How are we going to get to know all this? Well, there's a book. Now this is the McCowan's Price Guide to Antique and Classic Cameras. And this is, what, this is what you need. When you go to the boot sale, you need to be gemmed up on the prices. This book has a prices for virtually every camera ever made, from the very early Daguerreotype cameras to well, probably cameras up to about 1980. So it really is the Bible for photographers who collect cameras. Now all this was put together by Jim McCowan. He spent a lifetime researching old cameras. He's got a disclaimer in the book. The price of an antique camera is entirely dependent upon the moods of the buyer and seller at the time of the transaction. And how very true that is. The book actually has 40,000 different cameras in it and 10,000 illustrations. So it's an interesting thing to have. Now, of course, if you're starting out, you're not going to go and spend that money on that book. So how to go about starting? But before that, we'll ask ourselves a question. Is it the right time to buy cameras? Why am I starting again my collection? Well, it's basically because I think it's prices have gone down and they will rise again. And they've gone down because of eBay. Before people going to um, auction houses, etc. eBay has made it cheaper for people to buy, although you've got the post. Also, the digital camera. Everyone has put their old cameras on eBay. So there's been an enormous influx over the last five years of, of Nikons, Canons, etc. All the old film cameras. On top of that, people are going up in their in their cellars and in their in their going up in the cellar, going down in the cellar and up in the loft into their garage and finding old cameras, put them on eBay. There's been this enormous influx, hence prices. Now, what's going to happen in the next five years? Who knows? But I'm buying cameras. Now, what should a beginner do? Well, I would advise you to buy cheap cameras in very good condition. Don't try and uh, be clever with it. Um, I'll show you. If you can find something like this in excellent condition, it's an exactor, you should be able to pick it up for about £15. Um, beautiful. I mean, they are lovely cameras. A box camera in excellent. Don't even think about buying a box camera that isn't perfect. If it's perfect and if it's perfect in its box, that'll be okay. Fine. Don't pay more than £10 for it though. Um, what else have we have got? We've got the miniatures, but we'll get on to all that in a minute. 
Now, everything you see from now on is quite within the beginner's price range. I don't think there's anything that you'll see that is more than about £20. Plus postage, unfortunately. So, we'll have a look at all that. Come on in. The important thing is to decide what type of camera you want to collect because there are so many types and it depends on the space you've got. Now, here are sub miniature cameras and miniature cameras. So, this is a little camera that was made just after the war. Here we've got three Minox spy cameras, a bit James Bondy, and a Bakelite camera covered in dust that I've got to clean. And it's box, so very important. Now, the last one I'm going to show you is this Roly. Now, the Roly is brand new. It's in its original box, original presentation box, and that will only increase in value. I paid 15 euro for it. Well, let's compare it in the book. Um, I was very lucky. The guy had a reserve on it of 15 pounds, and I was the only bidder, so I got it, uh, sorry, 15 euro. So I got it for 15 euro, which is what, about 12 pounds. Uh, in the book, it says 75 to 125 dollars. Well, that's 43 pounds to 73 pounds so I got a very good deal but I've got to be honest I had to add the post once you add the post and the eBay Commission it brings it up a little bit more but it does prove that deals are available and I got the box and all the bits with it um, that's a big advantage it's just a shame it wasn't a gold one they did a gold plated version $1,500 Keep your eye out. This hit camera was, it's tiny. It just takes 16 millimeter film. It's a real camera. It was made in hundreds of versions. Um, people collect only those. They can range from 20, 25 dollars to many hundreds of dollars. And I've heard of them going for thousands of dollars because there are some very, very rare ones. And it's like collecting stamps. It really is. People say, what's the use of collecting cameras? Well, particularly old film cameras, well, there isn't a lot. But what's the use of collecting stamps? Minox, typical spy camera. Uh, a lot of cameras are called spy cameras, but this really is a little nearer the mark. Made in lots and lots of different models. Now, you can get them with Made in USSR written on them. You can get them made in Ritva, I think it is. And those command a higher price than the others. If you know this, and if you've got it knocked down, and you can recognise something that other people can't recognise, you can do fantastic deals. And that's what the fun is. Of course, not everyone can afford the book, and not everyone really wants to buy the book. So what to do then? How do you get information? Well, internet. Read, 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 read. If you get involved in one particular make, there are plenty of books about that make that will tell you all the little things, all the little difference in lenses, the things that add to the value or take away from the value. Well, now I'll show you another couple of choices. You could collect uh, cameras and bellows. They're always good fun and they're very cheap. Uh, Ugly cameras. I love ugly, ugly cameras. And uglier than this, you will not get. This is really the ultimate ugly camera. Just look at it all the way around. Awful thing, but weighs a ton. Really very heavy and a very good camera, actually. Now, there's one other, and that's the bee's knees of cameras. Now, look at that. If I keep it moving, you might think it's a Leica. Leicas sell for between 300, 500 pounds. For the standard models and up to millions of dollars for the special ones. So this looks like a Leica, feels like a Leica, actually works a bit like a Leica. Very good camera, but it's not a Leica. As you can see, it's written in a Russian around there and it's actually a Zorki. But Zorkies, beautiful weight, Zorkies you can pick up for 15 or 16 pounds on eBay. Very nice camera, good fun. Buy a couple of rolls of film, 
give it a try. So I think that's going to be my first little talk on, on old cameras. We'll see how it goes. If you like it, we'll do a couple more. Bye. Oh, who's this fella? Paul D D Douglas. It's certainly not me. I've got no idea who he is. Bye.